Hello. Well, what is that little thing? GoPro 8. Bruh. GoPro 8? You should run it over. That'd be fun. What are they at now for GoPro? I think oh. 10 is the ten? newest oh, one. Yeah. So this place is closed. It's closed. Don't get too excited. There's nobody here. It's a good thing I brought my own coffee, but I need a toilet. Uh, there's no toilet here either. Is there a hole in the ice? <laughs> yeah. Iceland's north is pretty harsh. In the summer, it's a playground for photography. In the winter, it's a bit tough, and many of the best sites in the region are frozen over. So with Greg and 10 other photographers in tow, we kind of cruised past much of the north in search of epic photos that await in the east of Iceland. Of course, we stopped at places like Mývatn and the geothermals. How could you not? Then we pressed on through a landscape of frozen waterfalls and snowy peaks. Greg and I also proved that while you can take the Canadian out of Canada, you can never take Canada out of the Canadian. Crampons? Who needs them? Eventually, we slid our way down to the coast of East Iceland, and we found a sunset so epic, it stopped us in our tracks. Okay, I'm not entirely sure we're still in Iceland because there's no wind, the weather's absolutely beautiful, there's high level clouds, we've come towards Estrahorn, and we were just cruising without much of a plan, and the light has just come out and we had to stop. So we basically just stopped roadside, and we're now looking for a place to get down to the coast to take some photos of this insane light. So uh, a bit of an adventure and hoping I can find something. Where are we? Months later searching Google Maps, it looks like we're at a place called Stordvard Fjordord. Um, I'm not sure what that means, something fjord. Google Maps says this is Saxa Sea Viewpoint, which is a bit easier. Okay, this is either gonna be really awesome or really frustrating because as you can see, there's some really beautiful color in the sky right now. Lots of really nice purples and blues. And I found a path to the end to this point. There's black rocks, there's some mild waves crashing up against it. But I don't exactly see a photo yet, but I think there's definitely something here. It's just a matter of finding it and how quickly I can find it and if this light will still be here when I do find it. So I tend to find a background I like first and luckily there's two backgrounds I like here. There's these peaks and off in the distance there's an island or the peninsula with the moon behind it. And then I try to find a foreground that fits into that. This isn't one of those locations in Iceland that makes for an obvious photo. However, the backdrop is stunning. So that's half the job done already. Now I just need to find an anchor for my frame. And if you know me, you can probably guess that I'm looking for like a rocky outcrop and some crashing waves. I'm trying to work on a photo, but balance is such a challenge here. The other issue is leading lines but I think a lot of photographers get so obsessed with leading lines that they forget that there's another uh, rule of composition which is diagonals and triangles. So I have a lot of diagonals and triangles in this image. I have basically this channel of the sea reaching out to the little end of the peninsula and then it kind of bounces back to the mountain range. And a lot of photographers would think that's bad because it doesn't lead directly to the subject but my belief is that your goal with an image isn't to like make it super obvious it's to keep the viewers attention as long as you can and by using diagonals you bounce the viewers eye around the image a bit more so that's what I'm trying to do to compensate for the fact that the composition isn't perfect that being said 
I also don't love the image just because the waves haven't been kind of crashing up the way I wanted to and I'm getting a little bit picky. Eventually, the waves start to hop the way I want them to, and the light absolutely smothers the scene. Not only does this location produce one good photo, it produces a bunch. Some images, some light, and some perfect Icelandic weather has me in a world-conquering mood as we pack up and get ready to move on. And I'm about to jinx the entire next two days. Knock on wood. But the weather is supposed to be insane. We rarely get skies like this in Iceland. You rarely get no wind. You rarely get no precipitation. The forecast is for nothing for like two days. Oh no, it's so, it's not actually, it's too thick. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I don't know man, it doesn't seem like a good idea. What's the saying? All good stories come from bad ideas? So everybody knows Vestrahorn, which is actually that way. It's a pretty famous location and we're gonna end up there today, but I always love coming to Estrahorn, the East Horn. We only have a super limited amount of time here, but it's just such a cool location, I couldn't resist stopping. There's always like a reflection pond, there's a place where the seas kind of crash up into rocks and then you can put that in the foreground. It's just a cool spot. One day I'll have to make time here for sunset. It's a cool location. But for today, it's a quick photo and then we're back on the road to Estrahorn's more famous sibling, Vestrahorn. This is uh, Vesterhorn up here and something is happening here that I've never seen before. Despite the fact that one of my favorite photos all time is from here, I have never had good light here. It's soft, it's uh, warm, and yeah, there's some clouds in the sky. I think I'm just gonna start with a really simple photo from up here on the dunes with the whole scene in front of me and then maybe work on some more complicated compositions as the evening goes on. Spoiler. There will be six photos from Vestrahorn. The first is a bit of a classic. Every time I come to Iceland, I try to make a different photo. It's so easy to fall into a trap of not just photographing the iconic, but photographing the iconic in a way that you know works. The last time we were here, I got, as I mentioned earlier, probably my favorite Iceland photo of all time. Uh, the conditions obviously were totally different. We were being hammered by a windstorm. It had just snowed. It was kind of overcast with a little bit of soft light coming through. But it's really easy to go, that was an amazing photo. Let's repeat it with different light. But I don't like doing that. I like trying to find new stuff. I try, like trying to have a different style to go into my portfolio. So I'm constantly wandering and looking for things. And I think today I really want to find more simple foregrounds to go with this epic backdrop. So I found some unscathed ripples in the dunes here. And that's kind of hard to find because there's lots of footprints. 
and it doesn't lead directly to the peak but it does lead through my frame and I think it kind of works shooting it at f16 to make sure everything's in focus I don't photo stack because I think depth is depth and it is what it is and also I'm lazy and I think the photo kind of works and when I say photo I mean photos three to be exact Iceland is showing out for us today And now I think I'm going to go a little bit farther ahead of the dunes than I normally go and try to play with some of the tiny, tiny dunes out front rather than the big set that's back here. Farther up, I did find an image. It's simple and maybe obvious, but I love how punchy it is. And actually, by the time my exposure ended, the light kind of just collapsed on us. It went from punchy to moody and dark. So, I swapped the sand for the sea, and my bright happy images for more moody ones. So I jinxed it a bit. Uh, we did have nice light for a while, but now it's just at sunset and the sun's gone behind some haze and it's kind of a little bit a little bit dull a little bit blue looking everything's a little bit blue looking but I'm down somewhere I have never shot before which is down on these rocks I've never come down here because it's never been low tide when we've been here and it's pretty good spot to shoot to be honest uh, lots of waves crashing on rocks you've got the dramaticness of the sea I'm playing with like one second shutter speeds more or less and yeah, even though the light didn't go epic, epic, it's been good. I really jinxed the weather forecast because somebody at the office here at the cafe, they told me that there's supposed to be crazy wind tomorrow. So I guess we'll see what happens. Crazy wind did happen. Our sunrise the next morning didn't happen, so we pushed west in fear of being trapped by a windstorm. But even a windstorm inbound didn't stop us from making a quick stop at Diamond Beach. Ambulance, Did anybody I'm... tell you that you're, uh, you look like an ambulance driver? I don't look like an ambulance driver. Oh, okay. I see it. I look a little like an ambulance driver. <laughs> the sunset was a stunner, but I had the incoming windstorm on the back of my mind. I had to keep my group safe. So, I didn't plan on taking any photos or my camera out of the bag, you know, until I did. I said I wasn't going to photograph anything and often times when I say that, that's when I do photograph things because I think I feel a little less pressure and I just start playing with things and then cool things happen. So coming to Diamond Beach, you often end up photographing these big scenes with the sky and everything off in the background. And I kind of just started playing with some abstract textures. And I've got this awesome piece of ice here. It's catching some side light and I'm just waiting for waves to come up. I don't even have the whole piece of ice. I'm literally leaning right on top of it Got my tripod set up funny. And then I'm focusing and basically I've got the camera on high speed, just waiting for waves to come up and capturing it. And it looks awesome. I'm really, really happy with these images. And I've, I've done this with like three or four different pieces of ice. And ah, here comes one. Whoop. That nah, didn't come up far enough. But you get the idea. I've done this with like four or five pieces of ice. And uh, yeah, absolutely loving it. I don't know why it's taken me 10 visits to Diamond Beach before realizing that the textures, contrast, and atmosphere of the black sand and ice make for pretty epic photos. We got to get going because I'm starting to get flashbacks to last time we were here. Oh shit. 
and they're calling for 144 kilometer an, kilometer an hour wind gusts in like two hours. So I've got to collect my humans and we've got to get going to the hotel. This was a whole lot of fun and I'll see you next time. Peace.